Hello. Welcome, every friend, to my humble Jordan. Get it? Because my name is Jordan, and this is my den. Today, Josh is back because he's just a voice, a ghost among men. Among men, and... Welcome. Cats. I did the bow show. Okay. Begin chapter three. Oh, yes. Chapter three in April. Oh my god, what is this? Ooh. It's a war room or something. We follow Marcus into what I can only describe as a control room of sorts. There are countless computer screens, some of which are obviously coming back on from having been shut off. Everything looks extremely complicated, from the screens filled with code and data to what is obviously a security system. It reminds me of a miniaturized version of the operations center in just about every space travel movie I've ever seen. Marcus is running from one screen to another, apparently looking for some pertinent bit of information. Where's the first aid kit? I snap at him. Marcus stops in his tracks as if he has forgotten the whole reason for bringing us down here. <laughs> oh yeah, he says, rushing to the left side of the room. There he hunkers down by an opened panel in the wall, what I assume is the emergency vault from where he got the rifle. Peering into the vault, what if he's gonna pull a fast one? Yeah man, let's have a geese. Alright, let's do it. I peer over Marcus's shoulder into the vault he's opened. It's much li- larger than it looks from the outside. It's partially- <laughs> Same. Oi. It's partially filled with file folders marked classified, a few rounds of ammo for the rifle, a particular plastic kit filled with syringes, and a locked black box. As Marcus digs around, one of the folders slips open. For the split second it's open, I see a scanned document and a color photo. The photo shows a male corpse with its guts on the outside of its body, as if it has been turned inside out. There's also massive swelling on his head, almost like his skull is about to explode. Marcus slaps the folder closed, and then I turn my attention to one of the syringes. It's filled with a violet colour fluid that, while rather pretty in colour, looks deadly. Marcus finally pulls out the first aid kit and turns around. When I look back to motion Dennis over, he's paler than ever. Come on, I tell him but he's not moving from the place on the floor where he sits against the wall. I slide the first aid kit over to him and go scrambling to his side. Between the struggle for the rifle upstairs and arriving in this room, he's faded fast. I struggle to lift his shirt up and then over his shoulders as the dried blood holds it in place. The mere act causes him to grimace. This might only hurt a little, I tell Dennis. He only nods. He doesn't seem to care. Rip it off quickly. You reckon? Yes. No. What, what makes you say that? Oh, cuz it's like a plaster, isn't it? Yeah, but also if he's scabbed to his shirt, it'll just open the wound. But it would do it if you do it gently. Maybe we should do it gently. I don't Fine. mind. Let's do it gently, okay. I reckon. We've been friendly to him oh. this much. I like Dennis. I lift the shirt off gently and it makes a sucking sound. There's so much blood that the moisture tries to keep the shirt pulled to him. Dennis lets out a little moan but seems to relax in spite of his injuries. With the shirt fully removed, the extent of his injuries becomes more clear. His wound is more visible now, although it's partially hidden by the blood that has started to clot around it. My medical knowledge is slim, basically just a bunch of basics I learned in Boy Scouts. I look over to Marcus hopefully and ask, You have any training? Zero! He says. Sorry! It's just as well, I guess. <laughs> He's far too concerned with what's happening on the mo- monitors to be of much help anyway. I start by taking out several rolls of... How do you say that word? Gauze. I start by taking out several rolls of gauze within the kit and wipe as much of the blood as I can away from the wound on his side. It's even worse than I figured from the start. The gash is deep and dark. I'm pretty sure it's infected too. Oh, yuck. He's going to need stitches, that's for sure but I have no idea how to even start that. Besides, I don't see the tools for it in the kit. When I splash rubbing, alco- uh, when I splash rubbing alcohol over the wound, he responds with a hoarse yelp of surprise, and, but nothing more. His eyes are locked on me, and he looks appreciative, but he's also scared. Be honest, Dennis says hopefully. How bad does it look? You think I'll live? Oh, don't make, don't ask me that question, Dennis. You'll be fine, Dennis. It's no problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's let's reassure yep. him. Good to know, he says, because I sure don't feel like that. You've been through hell, I say. I think it feels worse than it actually looks. Thanks, that's a relief. 
I won't lie, you're gonna have a scar, I say, trying to be funny. He chuckles a bit, but there's no humour in it. He rests his head against the wall and closes his eyes as I finish up. I place one layer of gauze against the wound and bind it with medical tape, then reinforce it with a second layer. I know it's meagre, but it's all I can do. Thanks, Roger, he says, actually managing to force out a smile. I feel a lot better. I think I'll be fine. I'm not so sure about that, but I'm glad I was able to encourage him. Finally, I patch up the bruises on my head a bit, cursing myself again for not grabbing oh, my hard hat. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, shit. I look, I look back to Marcus, and he is looking back at us, deep in thought. My eye is starting to really swell from where he kicked me earlier. Maybe I shouldn't have let him off so easy. Nah, it's fine. Are these first aid kits all you have in this facility? I ask him. If there's something better, I don't know about it, he says. I notice then that he is... I notice then that his defensive posture is no longer there. Something is different now, just a slight change in his demeanor. He's seen something on those monitors that has frightened him more than he already was before. What is it? I ask. What's wrong? His eyes travel around the room and it's obvious that he's trying to decide whether or not to tell me the truth. Oh no, I bet you Dennis is like infected with whatever they're doing in the facility. I don't think it's an infection. Well, it's something. It was a monster doing that to them, I reckon. Not like Resident Evil just came out. Check it out. (laughs) <laughs> um, come on spit it out yeah I reckon I eh? yeah man come on spit it out just what in the hell is going on here I ask not even really sure I want to know the answer his defiant gaze tells me that he's not going to be any help so I decide to look around for myself after a few moments I see a few things that even I can comprehend hidden in the information in the complex information on most of the screens On one screen, I see what looks like a power meter that is slowly climbing upwards. A single message is flashing beneath it, it reads. Let me move back. Unexpected (laughs) power failure! Foreign (laughs) entity! Another message trickling along the bottom of the black screen says. Safety locks on! Level 3 containment doors engaged! Override question mark! I see I see still scenes on a few other screens that I assume are security cameras showing hallways and passages from elsewhere in the facility. One of them shows the first level hallway that we were on just a few moments ago. Another shows a hallway I don't recognize. The floor is covered in blood. From just off the screen, I see what I think might be a human body, but it's bent in an impossible way. It looks like the body's legs and torso have somehow merged or melted into the floor. Ugh. Oh. Yucky. I don't want that. Shit, fuck. <laughs> Damo, fucko. Whoa. Fucko, demo. Let's ask about the. Oh, no, he won't tell us about the person. I, I, if we ask, he'll just be like, I'm not telling you. Yeah, 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 okay, you're right. Let's go, what's wrong with the systems? You're right. This place has backups for its backups, Marcus says. It's not ever supposed to suffer a full electrical shutdown. And what does foreign entity mean? I ask, hoping he has the same answer. I have no idea. That keeps coming off and on. Whatever it is, it keeps entering and exiting to set off the senses. What the hell? I ask. There's something still happening? We're still in danger? He turns away, clearly fearing that he has already said too much. And as bad as it is, there's a scene on another monitor that makes my blood go cold and my fear spike to the levels somewhere near terror. The scene is very familiar. It's the logging site. The equipment is unmistakably mine. I can even see my truck. Something like fury starts to rise up in my guts, momentarily pushing aside the fear. For a moment, I consider tearing into him. A few punches and a shove against the wall. Nothing more. I want more. I want answers. And I want them now! But I'm not sure which would provide more answers. Asking calmly or kicking his ass? Honestly, I think kicking his ass would. Yeah, man. Let's fucking give this cunt a hiding. Let's do it. Yeah. Alright. Alright. Done it. I figure since he's just an IT guy, I can probably intimidate him. I grab Marcus by the collar of his shirt and point to the screen. Why have you been spying on my crew? I shout. It was part of my job. Mine and a few others. Your crew has been watched ever since you set up your equipment. Why? Marcus tries to draw some anger of his own. But it isn't as toxic as mine. Still, I know there's a fight on my hands if I want one. 
Because, he says, your logging site was set up less than a mile away from the entrance to a highly classified government facility. How the hell was I supposed to know that? I scream at him. Where are the signs and the guards? Marcus gives me the same crooked, trembling smile that is beginning to creep me out. Because those things would draw attention to this place, he says. You have no idea how secretive this facility is. Besides, I know that the higher-ups looked into it. Your site isn't on government land. It's shy by about 300 yards. Every piece of your equipment is private property. The timber tract you purchased from Mr. Gladstone two months ago. So even if we wanted to intervene and keep your crew away, we couldn't have without stirring up a fuss. The fact that someone with such a low level clearance knows this much about my logging crew is unnerving. If you've been watching us, why didn't you recognize us when we met in the hallway, I ask. He shakes his head and exhales. Like it's obvious. The cameras have a bird's eye view. I can't see faces. We just track bodies and names. Huh. More aggression, you reckon? Now nah, ask calmly. You reckon? Now that well, I reckon he doesn't know where the crew is, because the power went out when the thing happened. Oh, true, he wouldn't be able to see anything. So it's not like he would have saw them shit happening to them. <laughs> and also, what he said was so reasonable, there's no reason was, to be mean to him. It was fairly reasonable. <laughs> like, thank you for a valid answer. I'll ask calmly. So since you have all the surveillance, do you know where the rest of my crew is? I do my best to keep my voice level, even though my impulse is to shout. Well, Marcus says, all of you were on site as usual before the incident. It had been a few hours since I had checked, though. They might have come near the facility, or maybe not. I don't know. He says this casually, like it's not important. Well, are they inside the facility? I ask. You have cameras everywhere, right? Do you see them? Marcus shakes his head. I've been looking all over, and I haven't seen your crew. They aren't here. But, he adds, the lower levels don't have any cameras. Classified. I'm not sure how they would have gotten there, but it's a possibility. I'm still shocked that we were being watched. Do they know everything about us? I'm telling you, Marcus said. The depth of influence in this facility goes deep. There are 36 employees down here. Outside of those employees, only five other people know this place exists. Should we stay calm? Um, I guess so. What if there is a monster here and it's like, oh, I can hear yelling, tee hee hee. That's a pretty... That's some forward thinking on you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Let's ask calmly. Thank you. <laughs> Asking calmly. What do all these people do here? I ask, keeping my voice level. He doesn't even pause to consider if he should go any further. He actually laughs when he gives me the answer. I honestly don't know everything. Probably very little. But what I do know is that it is more than Black Ops. <laughs> Black Ops what does Black that Ops mean, thing. I ask? There are scientists here who have been disowned by their own governments because of the nature of their work. You get it now? I don't. Not at all. It's crazy. But I don't want him to know about that. You said there are 36 employees, I say. Where are they now? He shakes his head. As far as I know, everyone else is gone. Gone where? He points to the screen that it still informs us of the... UNEXPECTED POWER FAILURE! And cringes. <laughs> If this power failure was not corrected in time, there's no telling. But but they're here in the facility somewhere, right? I ask, hoping someone will be able to help Dennis better than I can. I just don't know, Marcus says. They could be anywhere. Look, I say, furious with the way he is talking in riddles. I don't. Ah, God, Dennis says. I look over to him, and he looks as pale as a ghost. He stood up, and his eyes are locked on the monitor, cl monitor closest to him. What, I ask? He simply points to the monitor and then looks away. I look, I look to the monitor to see the, and see the log in sight. But more specifically, I see the overturned dozer and the legs sticking out from under it wearing work boots right where I left him. Tony. Fuck. Oh, no. The fact of his death Dennis. seems abstract almost, like it happened in some other world or a very long time ago. It kind of does. I, d I, I know that you already told me he was gone, Dennis whispers. But it's different actually seeing him. My god. Suddenly something blazes by the open door outside. The shape is fast and in shadow, but I'm pretty sure it's a person. Someone else is here! Marcus says, wheeling around. Oh. He sounds very happy to discover this, so I try to follow his lead. If something bad happened at this facility, then surely the sight of another survivor is a good thing, right? 
We should check it out, he says. I realize this isn't the best moment to leave Dennis after revisiting Tony's death all over again. Someone just ran, ran by the door, I tell him. Hopefully it's someone who can help us. No. My instinct is gonna is to be asking Dennis if he's gonna be okay. Cause he's like he's he's jacked up. That's true. But then also he's like a tough guy who doesn't like want the pity. That's true. This is this is also what I considered. He'll be like, oh fuck you know, I've fucking been okay since I arrived here. <laughs> got a got a durry can. <laughs> he like puts it in his open wound and smokes it from there. He pulls off his skin and Pickler the Wild emerges. You got a fucking durry can. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Go see who it is. He says, giving me a mock thumbs up. I turn to Marcus and motion for us to head out to investigate. It's be careful. Marcus says, depending on who it is, they might not be as hesitant to shoot a stranger as I was. I nod at him as, as I head for the door. I'm still holding the rifle in my hand, and I don't know if I have the guts to actually use it if needed. With a final look back to Dennis, I run out into the second level hallway. Continue. Oh. Oh. Orange. 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 Marcus follows. Orange. There is still fear in his eyes, but also the slightest glimmer of hope. That hope is contagious. We take off after the figure that just run past the command center. Ahead of us, the facility presents yet another long hallway. Right away, I notice that this level of the facility seems darker, even though the lights are on, all, are now all on. The hallway is adorned with numbered yellow doorways and a large and large white panels along the walls. It's clean and well maintained, but there's something ominous about it. Up ahead, I see the fleeting motion of something dark, cutting quickly to the left down a corridor. There, I say quietly, I like that voice, <laughs> pointing up ahead. Marcus gives a nod, and we continue chasing after the person we saw blazed by the command center just moments ago. It then occurs to me that this person could be like Marcus was at first, armed and scared. Now, let's not do a Joshi, and let, let's do the, uh... There's... There, it's the it's a double-edged sword, Joshua Bosho. Why is that? Shout at them. They could get scared and shoot us because they don't know who we are. But also, they might not get scared and shoot us and know that we're coming. Right? Pros and cons <laughs> for that one. Pros and cons for the next one. Mm -hmm. Move towards them slowly. We fucking sneak up on them, give them a fright, shoots us. Oh, this is what I... I'm pretty sure this is what I said when we had to approach Marcus when we didn't know who he was. I was saying the same shit. Yeah. Double-edged. Um, um, let's go slowly. Yeah, I reckon. When we reach the intersection in the hall where we'd just seen the shadow moving, I ease around the corner just in case. Sure, I have the rifle in my hands, but I don't want to use it unless I have to. I quickly dart around the corner and, and take the same shooting stance I've seen countless times on movies. There's a woman standing there, about 10 feet away. She has reddish blonde hair and a small, mousy build. She looks terrified and is visibly shaken. Aww. She's probably in her late 30s, wearing a lab coat with dark jeans and green Converse low tops. I have a strange sense yeah. that her fear is not just about our sudden appearance. She looks like a woman who's been running scared for a while now. Her hands are raised in surrender. She's not holding a weapon. Marcus slowly approaches, approaches taking a few steps ahead of me. It's Amy, right? He asks. She blinks, seemingly surprised that he knows her name. Yeah. Oh, I need to. I need to be a girl. Yeah, yes. She says. And your Mark. Marcus. Mark. She nods absently <laughs> and then looks at my rifle. I'm just laughing because like Marcus is so keen and she's just like, oh yeah, Mark, Marcus, whatever. <laughs> it's. <fine."> yeah. Um, <laughs> no. I'm not going to use it. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be mean to her. She's scared. She's scared. I'm not gonna use it. She's got an innocent voice. Now how do I know that? She asks. Wait, is that her talking? Yep. You're trespassing on a government property in the midst of a huge catastrophic event. And you have a rifle. How am I supposed to believe you? I have a friend in the back command center who needs medical attention, I say. And we're not, and we're looking for the rest of our crew. I'm really sorry, but I don't know where they are, she says. Do you know what happened? 
Marcus asks, from the power outage? <laughs> I like the voices, Josh. <laughs> I don't know what caused it, she says, but there was an experiment taking place when the outage occurred. Something happened and... She trails off here, giving me a look of distrust. I, I saw things on the security monitors, Marcus says. The experiment failed, didn't it? I don't know any of the specifics, Amy says. <laughs> I barely escaped the third floor. <laughs> Is that her Why again? does she sound suggestive? Because <laughs> Joshy. <laughs> mm. Fuck. Mm -mm. I was going to the command center to see if the security footage showed anything, but then I saw you and the gun. Listening to their conversation, I'm totally, I'm feeling totally in the dark. Um, what has you so scared? I feel like, yeah, definitely, because I don't think she'd talk about experiments. Yes. Amy looks like, to me, even her eyes she was wide and the terrified. Gun. Sorry. Who are you oh, anyway? Right. She asks. I quickly give her my story. A logger stranded in the woods following a peculiar explosion at the logging site. As I tell her, recognition blooms in her eyes. You're one of the loggers? Yes. <laughs> she then looks <laughs> Yes. <laughs> she then looks to Marcus and says, I thought I thought they were being watched. They were, Marcus says. This was a freak accident, <laughs> and there's no proof that they were responsible. I feel myself wanting to submit all of the questions that are piling up in my head, but Dennis is waiting for me. Medical help. Yeah. Medical Dennis help. is important because we lied to him and said that he was okay. Yeah. I, yep, I decide that despite my curiosity, I need to get Dennis help as soon as humanly possible. Look, is there any medical help to be had here or not? I ask. Probably, Amy says. But you have to find Colonel Barksdale. He knows where all of those sorts of supplies are. And where is he? Where is everyone else? I ask. At this, Amy starts to weep. She falls to her knees as if someone had struck her from behind. Gone! Mm. Ah. So, some were killed, and some were just... I don't know. They disappeared right in front of me. I told you, dude. Aliens. Oh, fuck. It was fucking aliens. <laughs> like, uh, humanly constructed aliens. Because they were doing experiments. Unless it was an alien, and he... We're in Area 51. Or because this you isn't actually right. Area 51. Let me rephrase that. We're in Area 52. <laughs> 51A. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Oh, we can't say what the hell is going on because she's crying and she'll be like, You just said hell. <laughs> you just said hell. <laughs> Fuck. Roger is the best oh. guy in the fucking world. Yeah, Roger's He's great. like talking to Marcus and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to remain calm. And then we're talking, oh, if we kept yelling at him, she would have heard us yelling and fucking had a heart attack. <laughs> had a heart attack. Right? Um, yeah, definitely. Yes, she answers. They were here one second and gone the next, just... Then she snaps her fingers. Gone. Oh, you did it. Something's here with us. We were conducting an experiment and it all went horribly wrong. Something came through. Came through what? Oh, like Marcus asks. Shit. That's pretty cool, eh? I don't even know that much. Yeah. An entity? But whatever it is, it's still here somewhere? Amy responds. How could you not know? Don't you have full security access? Oh, that's me. Oh, well. No. <laughs> I have access to almost everything, but... There are two levels of security beyond my clearance. So what do you suggest we do now? I ask. I'm not sure, she says. <laughs> Wiping her tears away. But if you want oh, to find no. your crew, we need to find Barksdale. He's in charge. Where is he? Down on the third level, in the hangar. Then let's go. It's not that easy, Amy says, looking again at the rifle in my hands. Why not? Like I said, something came through when the power out. There's several of them, all roaming the third level. Oh, I kind of want to be like the badass. Doesn't matter, let's move. Okay, so, 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 like... so, so. They made a portal and got aliens through it. Or they made a portal <laughs> and got <laughs> fucking parallel universe fucking demonic kill fuckers to come out of it. Oh no, it's Doom 3. Yeah. 
they're, they're my two theorizers at the moment. Anyway, do, I feel like I'd rather ask what came through because I don't want to have my head swell up and my guts go to the outside of my body. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's fair. Yeah, thank you. Honestly, that's fair. What came through? All right, what, what came through? All I know is the others refer to them as entities. Amy shudders as she recalls shudders. the horrors she has seen. I don't even know know how to describe them. I didn't get a good look. All I did was run for my life. Behind me, I just heard screams. I know it's not very scientific of me, but I didn't feel like sticking around to learn more. She's right. Marcus says, stopping my train of thought. The things I saw in the monitors was crazy. This is insane, I bark. <laughs> I'm going to the third level to find this Barksdale guy. Thanks for your help. Wait! Marcus says, I'm sticking with you. If we want to get out of here, we have to find Barksdale, right? Yes. Amy says, but Barksdale is on the third floor and it's too dangerous to go back there. I figure I'll let them make their own decisions. In the meantime, I start heading back to the command center to get Dennis. Before I get there, I hear I hear their footsteps fall behind me getting closer. I give Amy a questioning look and she quickly looks away, clearly torn. Neither one of you know your way around here, she says. Looking for Barksdale on your own would be suicide. Like it or not, she has a point. Fine. Then let's get Dennis from the command center and head down together. <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Continue. Continue. Back in the control center. I can tell by the picture on the Trolls. screen. We enter the command center and I'm happy to see that Dennis has regained some of his color. We're going to get you some help, I tell him. And then we're going to go find our crew and get the hell out of here. More help would be great, he says. With the way you took an hour to get my shirt off earlier, I'm not letting you touch me again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Amy says. Maybe one of us should stay here with him. I'll be okay. Oh, my voice. I'll be okay. Oh, my voice. I'll be okay, Dennis says. He stands to his feet with a grunt. You don't know what's out there, Amy says. I saw them. I saw what they can do. This facility is not safe. <laughs> um, it actually went through my head uh, that someone could stay with Dennis. Like, two people stay here and two people yeah. go. Like, it would suck if they died while we were gone. Like, something just came mm, here and it's... collectively killed Dennis and whoever stayed with him. But then, like, mm. there's a high chance that Dennis can't go to the third floor and dodge monsters. Anyway... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are there any of them on this um, floor? That's a question. That's probably more useful than what can they yeah. do, actually, yeah. I'm not sure. Let's do it. But they're down on the third floor, so we'll need to be careful. Marcus looks a little hesitant, but nods his agreement, and the four of us exit the command center. Heading back into the hallway, wow. I look at, I look back to the monitors. I take a final look at the screen that shows my wrecked login site, and I feel a pang of sorrow. I then look at the other monitors showing live feeds of the facility security cameras. I try to tell myself that I'm not looking for any sign of Amy's creatures, but I can't. That's exactly what I'm doing, and there's no need to pretend otherwise. We head back through the hall and towards the elevator. The tension exists between us is like a... Huh? The tension? Physical presence. That's it. The tension exists between us is like a physical presence. It's just a weird way to word it. Oh, uh, yeah. I think they, they missed a that. The tension that exists between us. Thank you. That would make sense. Anyway. Yeah. Continue. Oh. Elevator. I like the look of the steel. Loving an elevator. I like to rub it on my, my fresh ball sack. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Whoop. We step in, inside the elevator and the pristine doors close. Inside the elevator... Amy seems to become much more guarded and distant from us. I want to assure her that I mean her no harm, but I'm also not going to put the rifle down. So you have pretty high clearance in this place, right? I ask her. That's right. So what kind of experiment are we talking about? What went wrong? When she starts to answer my question, I can tell that it is something for a, of a relief for her to get some of it off her chest. There's been a lot of work on a project taking place here over the last three years or so. The purpose is to find out if there is any real viable science behind point-to-point -point instantation. Like teleporting? I ask. <laughs> oh my god! Marcus says. I had no idea. I knew there was some weird stuff here, but nothing this insane. 
It's really not all that insane, mm. Amy says. Uh. It's really not all that <laughs> insane. We found our first major break- breakthrough about nine months ago. We were able to transport a live rat from this cage on level three to a small lab in New Mexico. The trip took the rat five seconds. Are you kidding me? Wow. Dennis says, I can tell he wants to sound as if he's mocking the idea, but he fails. He is scared. Not at all. <laughs> the problem was that when the rat arrived, its retinas were detached and its intestines were on the outside of its body. Okay. <laughs> Ugh, Yum. That's not okay. I'm not going to ask if you I'm ever perfected curious. it, because the dead guy we saw in the hallway would suggest otherwise. Yeah, that's So true. let's ask this one. What does what this have to do with us now? Well, about six months ago, we successfully made the same exper- experiment. The rat arrived in great health, and this time in just three seconds. Still... One of the things that we needed to tweak in order to make the process completely safe was to figure out how to keep the subject on on a straight course. When the matter is being transported, not only are its atoms being unkit and then put back together upon arrival. Unknit. Um. Uh-huh, okay, so this is like the um. Yeah, this is like from I want to say Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, it's like some, yeah. Uh, unknit, because we know what transported means. Unkit. Unkit. Love me. Yes, deconstructed mm. and translated through space. It's the only way we know how to do it right now. But the issue is, as I said, comes in keeping <clears> the deconstructed <throat> subject on a straight course to its destination. Oh, this voice is so hard to hold <laughs> <laughs> for the duration of all of this shit that she's saying. When the process occurs, there are De- de- we are we're deforming space time. We are creating a shortcut through space, and that has risks. Why exactly? Dennis asks. Because there are many more dimensions in space than the. Th- ah, see, look, that's what I said. Anyway. There are many yeah, more yeah, dimensions, dimensions in space than the three we exist on, she explains. Because there are many more dimensions in space that, than the three we exist on, there's some evidence that there are as many as ten. So when you send the rat to New Mexico, it's travelling through another dimension to get there, I ask. Basically. And because of that, we're trying to get a better understanding of what those other dimensions are capable of. Things that a great deal of the population would be scared of if they ever knew that we were doing, hence all the privacy. Then today, the power went out as we were right in the middle of an experiment. Something happened. What? I don't know. She's speaking with an authority of someone who knows what she's talking about. Um, I feel like the creatures one is more relevant, but but that is I'm why the creatures so are here. Unless you don't have a brain, he's a logger, but he's not dumb. You don't know that. Oh, he might be dumb. He's not dumb. Even I put two and two together, right? Is that why the creatures are here? No, they fucking got in their car and drove here. Like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <They're gone. laughs> All right, what have you seen, Rudo? No, no, you're totally right, though. Other worlds, other Tegmark universes, where our laws of nature don't apply. She says it's not bothering to explain what she means. I'm not cleared for such things, but I do get the reports. What reports? Max asks. I'm given access to the results of the tests. In other words, Marcus replies clearly upset, you guys have been peeking into other dimensions and taking notes on what you say. I can't believe I've wasted my life for this, he murmurs to himself. He looks like he's starting to freak out. Amy is quiet. I fucking... You hate him? I hate it's him. It's just because yeah, of the voice I've given him. It doesn't help. <laughs> Amy is quiet. Her expression indicates that she's waiting to so see? Waiting to see? To see. So somebody made a typo. Um, Amy is quiet. Her, expre- her expression indicates that she's waiting to... See how I react to Thank all of you. this. I want to say that's incredible. It's pretty incredible. Can we just say that? But then I'm a yeah, yeah. Let's just say it's it. not we're, insane. We're it's if someone figured out how to do that, they like it's a thing. I'd shake their hand. Yeah, man. That's incredible. Oh, I was impressed, Joshy. That's why she was being suggestive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's keen. So this is like interdimensional stuff. In a way. Marcus, on the other hand, is... Incredulous. Incredulous. Thank you, Joshua, for saying words I don't know. 
I don't want I anything to do with this, he says. All this time I've been working for... For... He laughs cruelly, and the sound of it makes my blood go cold for a moment. Just a single level beneath my feet. You assholes have been tearing apart space and time. Max continues. When the elevator doors open, I can't get out fast enough. The tension is growing way too thick for my liking. Outside of the elevator, we step out into what appears to be a massive industrial area. The carnage waiting for us is unlike anything I'd seen in the upper levels. Oh no, carnage. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you for watching the Bow Show. Joshy, quick, do a silly outro. My, my name's Joshy, and I'd like to say that next time on the Bow Show, we're going to drink methylated spirits. Oh no, yes. Do not drink methylated spirits, it's very bad for you. Don't. <laughs>《He chuckles a bit, there's no... but there's more... He... <sighs> he chuckles a bit, but there's no... Oh! He chuckles a bit. You know. Shush.